Hey everybody, this is uh, Jay Gabriel. This uh, I'm trying to make basically one last video on showing some of the weird stuff that I come up with and some of the ideas. Uh, this has been one of my main tools. These taps, usually I use one millimeter, not the one millimeter, excuse me, one the M12 and the M14. Uh, of course, I use this thing comes with a little mini tap and die. Uh, the taps that come with it are, are awful, really, when it comes down to it, but you can use them. I use mostly between one millimeter, not one millimeter, but a 1.5 millimeter outer diameter stainless steel tubing 304 with, uh... oh, no, I messed that up, two millimeter outer diameter stainless steel tubing with a 1.5 millimeter inner diameter and usually what I like to do is polish that up smooth it out use some 800 grit and come in behind with some 2000 grit and I'll take a 3 millimeter outer, outer diameter and a 2 millimeter inner diameter brass tubing and if I can find right here, this little thing right here, slide that off, put that in my Dremel bit, and pretty much run that disc, that brass disc up to this point. And at that point, it lets me know that it will slide over that stainless steel tubing. Now, when I cut it, cut off a piece, it just takes a little bit of messing around till you finally get, you know, actual length that you're looking for I'll leave one end in this case rough well not rough but a uh, square like I said if it was cut and the other end I will take a file and I will round it off and when I do that that allows that wafer to come off and slide back onto that tube as you had saw now the flare it this is like $3.99 at Harbor Freight. You can probably find them cheaper. Uh, I misplaced mine, so I had to go to Harbor Freight and go pick up another one. And lucky for me, I decided to do that uh, in the middle of uh, Birmingham's rush hour traffic. So, <clears throat> now we'll go to the nails. The nails that I use are wire bread nails. Depending on the uh, diameter of the nail, this one is like a 1.2, 1, 1. so I use the 1.3. The 1.3, I thread it, and I use the M12 of these style taps. And I will use either the 2 millimeter, 1 millimeter inner diameter, or the 3 millimeter outer diameter, 1 millimeter inner diameter to thread the center of that and cut it off and make pretty much a, a nut to screw down on this to seal it off. Now, this was one that I have soldered prior. I will show the cleaning process of this. I have another one already in the vise to solder and I am just going to use a couple pieces and when you choose your nail uh, look at it closely. Make sure it's not wonky and off-center. Everything. Uh, that one's pretty good. I probably need to clean that one up a little bit more. Uh, usually with the wire bread nails, they have uh, thicker heads. I'm going to see if I can find one here. Let me just grab one of these out of here. And this is what I like to do. I like to look at it. Would see these being like they are. It doesn't matter if these are wonky or not, but I usually try to get them pretty much where they're made center. And what I'll do is I'll take a file with this in the rotary tool, take off some of that meat off the head, and come in here behind with a file. You don't have to use a needle file. You can just use one of these regulars. Just catch right here on that lip as it spins, and it should pretty much square it off, which will catch it pretty well in undercutting as well as threading now let's see let me find my victim that I have chosen 
uh, to build a pen with. Is this the one? No, it's smooth. I've already gotten one threaded somewhere. And the thing is, my quest is to find it. Yes. Make sure that this is not one of the ones with the wonky head. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a wonky head. The reason why I say that is because when you look at the diameter of this head here, when it goes to say we're going to use... Uh, I'm going to check this lock right here. Right here. Gives me plenty of play. So, you know, this would be good. So the head's a little bit wonky, but, you know, I can work with it. And what I have here is a piece of stainless that I've uh, rounded the top off to. And I have flared the end. Now, let me go right over here to where I've had some stuff that I pre-made. And I have made, showed how to make in previous video right here. And I've decided to make smaller versions of this, learning how to make uh, rattlesnake pips this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that down. Now, I've already pre-cut what I'm here, which is a 3 millimeter outer diameter to a one millimeter inner diameter that I've already pre-threaded. So all I do is uh, get this, if I can get this on, and it's a little bit difficult. When you got a camera between you and the item you're trying to thread, but yeah, you thread that down, and you once you get it down to where either it's usually about six millimeters, sometimes you can leave yourself a little bit of play so the head of that nail can drop down in there, or you, you might not be able to. I think seven millimeter is about the longest you want in one of these pins to be to go inside of a lock and you pretty much want to either use a, a, a small key pin with a spring, maybe a weaker spring. That's what I've, I've always heard, but you know, I try not to go too much out of that, you know, cause I don't know, sometimes you might need to try just to see if it's gonna work or not. But anyway, that's pretty much the these are pretty much easy to make. It just takes time. It takes practice. Um, here is another version of something I wanted to show you. This right here is not gonna go in any challenge lot because it's just way too damn big. But if you look, it'll come off of that pin on one end, realign itself and Instead of flaring it at the back end, I've rounded it off at both ends so it can jump off that steel tubing on either side. I have other plans for this, and like I said, this is just too big to uh, turn into a, um, a driver pin unless I can find something with a Bible which will allow me to use such longer pins, then yeah, I might use that. Um, now, with this pen, I, I, this has been a few video attempts. I've had the battery die out, so I got it charging while I film this. Uh, the flared end, I've got over the nail that keeps the little uh, brass wafer that I've used the bead reaming to widen it up to where it would slide and align itself over this tube to keep it from coming over the head of the nail. Uh, now, soldering. Soldering these things, you know, it's not really all that hard. There we go. Alright, no solder. Use your little bit of flux. In this case, I am using lead-free tinning flux. Your solder, lead-free. You can use rosin core. You can use acid core. I prefer using rosin. It works fine with me and everything else I've worked. You can usually tell the difference uh, when it comes.
comes down to it, mostly by the smell. The rosin core has a sweeter smell. And it's usually used for electronics, holding uh, pieces of metal together, you know, so. It doesn't have to be acid core. Acid core is what you're going to use for like the plumbing and stuff like that. So your rosin core works perfect for this. All right. Here's the whistle. Me, I use one of these to turn on the Let it warm up. And once it warms up, Another flux, and hopefully it's hot enough. And go ahead and heat the brass that we have here. And you can touch it with a solder and it should melt. And once it melts, then that bond is there. You're pretty much good to go. Try to get a little bit hotter. This is it's a little bit better, but yeah. Turn that off. Dip your tip in some uh, some flux. Deadly. Cool it off. What I like about this, they got it where it's set up to where it's got to where it won't roll over. And the hot iron won't burn anything. Alright, we have made this pen now. So it, it's a little sticky right now because of the excess flux. Now get rid of your flux. Let's see what we'll go to actually we'll just use the one we just soldered. Find that lid to my flux if I can figure out what I did with it, which I hid over here. And we'll close that. Here's the other previous pin that I had made. Set these right here. Break out the trusty Dremel. Now the Dremel tool is going to be a little bit noisy. I hate it, but it's going to be a part of the process, so you can see what I do, and I'm going to rock and roll with it, I'm going to bring this out some, out, 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 back, or out of the power, or I just turn the camera, okay, we'll take this pin, oh, by the way, you can get the cheap Chinese ones uh, from online, these are pretty good, especially when it comes to gripping uh, small diameter things such as like this nail. You can get it real good and tight on there, which uh, we're going to use probably another one. And you'll see, I have another one I also use as well, but I think I'm going to use this. Go ahead and use this one, which you can actually get through Lowe's. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're more true to the original chucks that you get uh, with your Dremel. I'm going to have to just slide that up a little bit more on that nail so it bites down on a nail but leaves me plenty to where I can cut the back off of it. Alright. Now, getting rid of the flux, cleaning your pen. Very simple. Rubbing alcohol. Dip a, tooth, a toothbrush down and how to use toothbrush or if you got a new one that you want to use you can use that this one you know it's just what this purpose is for it basically you get it in there turn it on put it here clean off all your excess flux clean off all your excess flux once the excess flux is cleared off now if you want Take a little bit of a 2,000 grit sandpaper on the cap here, which is uh, a 
a, a piece of a three millimeter to two millim, uh, three millimeter and one millimeter in a diameter uh, brass. polish you see how that works just fine right there then you come in with your cutting tool in my case this thing right here uh, we're gonna come out here. I'm gonna do a little bit of visual aid which is gonna be this and I'm sorry I'm blocking the view but Right now, in this case, my view is a little bit more important. And, uh, I got it started. Now, you know that bead reamer bit I showed you earlier? I'm a two part deal with this. And this, a little battery operated, and where I cut the nail. There you go. One hybrid rattlesnake pin, or you could be like, hey, that's a, a pin, in pin, in a pin, but that's really just a wafer. But you could see it as a pin and pin and pin but it's captive and not you know separate it's all one piece um, I think this right here sh is pretty much about it um, I guess I will talk about the key pin like making a key pin and I'm just find that pin the butt one that I have made a few of them and sent out in challenge locks if I can find it. Oh, it's just a pain in the ass, man. It's seriously, it was a pain in the ass. Um, I had to take the tubing, round out one end, leave enough to where... You know, I'm not really going to talk about that. I think they right there pretty much... I don't know if I can find it. I'll show it to you. Then I'll talk about it. But if I can't, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to let that pretty much be about it on as far as I'm trying to find it. Because I do want to show y'all. Ah, matter of fact, I did find it. Okay. This is one of the little things I decided to create using brass tubing and if I can find my tweezers uh, well it's not here they are the tweezers right here and I just saw it what did I do with it oh right here in front of my face a riddle snake I'm go, go figure uh, as you see it's brass tubing, threaded wire brad nail. Now you could add wafers onto it and turn that into a rattlesnake. Uh, this particular one, I had to use the, um, a little bit bigger than the M14. And that was to thread the head and the tap. I'm not sure if it was the number 15 on the, the coffin here. Maybe it could have been the 16. But it's a little bit of imagination looking at some things. You can create all kinds of wild things inside of challenge locks. Like I said, you don't have to go to no dirt crossroads in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of stuff and wait for the devil to come up to sell your soul to become a challenge lock maker. Just takes a little bit of imagination. Right materials and tools, you know. 
Some people spend a lot of money on them. Some can pull off the same effect using very little. So, I think that will conclude my pen making videos. I have a few ideas that uh, I, I might share later on. I don't know. But, other than that, I've basically covered a lot of the different pens I make. And now it's up to you, fellas and ladies, to start fishing. Thank you so much. And uh, before I do go, I think I mentioned that. I don't know. But you probably... Uh, there are a couple of things I, want, I did want to talk about. Um, this here, I took a fought regular file. This is three millimeter, one millimeter, and uh, the three millimeter took down a little bit more. That's so the cap will be a little bit smaller, but it'd be big enough for the spring to push down on because if you used, uh, let me get my tweezers again, here we go. Let me show you this last thing too. Uh, one millimeter by two millimeter. And if you use this as a cap and threaded it, uh, you can do it with both the uh, M12 as well as the M14. Um, I think I would go with the uh, three millimeter out, outer diameter on the uh, M14 because I usually use this for the M1, the M12. Yeah, M12 is the best for this. Uh, the three millimeter outer diameter is the M14, but the spring will actually slip over this, and you see your pin will actually become one with the spring. Not necessarily that's something that you want to do. Uh, so you might want to put you like a little bit of a wafer, and tweezers again right here. like that little guy right there above it so if it's above the shear line the cap is just above the shear line it'll move a little bit get a little bit of a, a drunken movement but keeps that uh spring at bay and off of that uh there's probably something else i wanted to talk about but i'm actually quite tired and uh i gotta start putting together Challenge lock number 50. I've got most of the pins made as far as the drivers. I'm going to make some security pins. But for now, that's pretty much about it. I hope these videos I've made have been informative, inspire, and help you make some of these rattlesnake pins yourself. Um, I chose the thread method, method and using the solder instead of a trying to match up just a hole to a pin, maybe with like a ledge and let it sit on there. Let's say, find another one of these wide ones. Uh, well, basically where it just sits up on a ledge and then you solder through the hole onto like a T-pin or try to flare the T-pin. Uh, just the the tap and die threading, screwing it on, then soldering, then going from there seemed to be about the best option for me to make uh, a consistent uh, rattlesnake pen. And I think that is officially about everything I can think of. Run it through my head. Nope, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you stuck it out. What is it, like five hours for this video? And I don't know how many retakes and reshoots. But enjoy. Don't be afraid to mess up. And keep on trying.